What's up everyone and thanks for joining me again today. Today I want to start a new video series on execution plans since it's been one of my most requested topics to date. I nearly always start my performance troubleshooting by looking at an execution plan and so in this multi-part series we're going to show you how you can use execution plans to troubleshoot your own SQL server query performance problems. And so in today's video, we're specifically gonna be talking about what an execution plan is and all the different ways that you can view a query's execution plan in SQL Server. So SQL Server is a declarative language. Instead of specifying how to get the data off the disk or from memory, you just say, hey, SQL Server, this is the data I need. Here are some filters and restrictions you know, let me hit execute and go off and get my data. So an execution plan reveals to us how SQL Server is deciding to retrieve the data that we requested of it in our SQL query. For most queries that we want a performance tune, the SQL Server Query Optimizer calculates a bunch of different possible ways of returning the data to you, and then ends up choosing one of those plans to actually run your query. Most of the time, this process works really well, and SQL Server returns your data in a pretty quick manner. And it's important to note that I didn't say that SQL Server returns your data in the quickest manner possible. That's a common confusion that a lot of people have, um, because SQL Server simply can't. Right? If it went and calculated all the different ways of getting your data, it could take, I don't know, an hour to run all those different combinations where your query may only take actually five seconds to run. So as soon as SQL Server finds a plan that it thinks is good enough, is fast enough, uh, it's going to go ahead and run it because calculating every possible combination of you know ways of getting your data is often just unfeasible. Problems arise when the query optimizer chooses a plan that doesn't actually get your data efficiently. This can happen for a number of different reasons, and we'll go more in depth into those reasons in future episodes of this series. But for now, just know that right when we performance tune our poor performing query, it's because SQL Server chose a plan uh, that you know had maybe inaccurate information about it that made the query run longer than we would like. So today, let's start by looking at what an execution plan looks like and where we can find them. One way that we can view the query plan that SQL Server generated in order to retrieve the data that we ask of it in our query is by setting the show plan all option to on. If we go ahead and do that, we'll see that SQL Server returns a text-based tree that shows the logic and the order of what the different operations are occurring when it's retrieving your data. Now, if you're familiar with other relational database systems, right, you may be used to seeing an execution plan in this kind of text tree based format, but in SSMS, uh, in SQL Server, we have a much better option. We have a graphical way of displaying execution plans. We can do that by pressing the display estimated execution plan button. This graphical representation is my preference, and this is what we're going to be looking at throughout the rest of this series. But I do want to show you that we can also view the underlying XML that SSMS is using to generate this graphical execution plan. If we just right click and show execution plan XML, we'll see the underlying XML information for this execution plan. And while most people don't find this XML as easy to look at as the nice graphical execution plan, it's important to know that this XML is here because sometimes there are some properties and values that you can only find by diving into the XML, right? They don't, you can't find them in the graphical interface. So far, every plan we've been looking at is what's known as an estimated execution plan. It's known as the estimated plan because it only contains information that it has available to it before the query gets executed. So things like statistics and meta information about your tables and objects and the data within them. To retrieve our actual plan, all we have to do is click the button for the actual execution plan and then run our query. If we hop on over to the execution plan tab, we will see our actual execution plan. There's often a lot of confusion about the differences between an estimated execution plan and an actual execution plan. In truth, the query plans themselves are actually the same. The main differentiator is that the actual execution plan contains runtime information. So if we hover over one of these operators, for example, you'll see that in this actual execution plan, we can see the actual number of rows, the number of executions, and so on, right? There's actual data uh, that we have available to us because this plan was updated after it executed. 
The estimated plan, on the other hand, can't have any of those actual numbers because the query hadn't ran yet. So if we don't care about those actual execution statistics, the estimated execution plan and the actual execution plan will be the same. A third way we can look at an execution plan is by turning on live query statistics. This is something that was introduced in 2016 and it's actually really cool for those times when you are running a query that doesn't seem to ever want to finish. It's also really helpful if you're newer to looking at execution plans because it makes it pretty obvious to see which operators are the bottlenecks in your performance. In order to enable our live query statistics, all we need to do is press the button with the little green check mark here in SSMS, and we'll execute our query, and you'll see we get our estimated execution plan immediately, but now there's some animation and we're seeing how many rows are actually being completed during runtime, um, and we can see exactly which step our execution is currently on. So you could see our scans were taking a while, and then as soon as we finish, the rest of the steps completed quickly. So if we needed to performance tune this query, we would know to kind of focus on, okay, that big clustered index scan. And so these live query statistics are a hybrid between estimated and actual execution plans. You're getting the benefits of right, an estimated execution plan of getting it immediately, uh, but then the real time actual data is being overlaid on top of it. So you have a better idea of what's going on as your query is executing. So up to this point, we've been looking at how to view execution plans for queries that you are running running in real time or have already available in your SSMS window. Uh, now I want to show you how you can find execution plans for historical queries, you know, queries that ran uh, you know, previously on your server. So one way to look at a historical plan is to look in the query plan cache. Because query plans are not free for SQL Server to compute, uh, when SQL Server generates one, it's typically going to cache it uh, and so that it can be reused in the future. We can view these cache plans by looking at the DMV called DM exec query plan. And right, if we run this, joined with uh, some of our other DMVs to get the data we need. We'll see a lot of information about the queries that are in our plan cache, including our XML, uh, which when you click on it will open up as our uh, graphical execution plan. And that's a pretty handy way of getting queries that you know have previously run on your server. The thing to be aware of is that if the query plan has been cleared out of your plan cache, uh, you might not find it. And the plans that you are looking at right, are estimated plans, so the actual runtime values won't be there. And the second way I like looking up historical query plans is to look in the query store. Now this obviously only works if you have query store enabled on your database, but if you do, there's one way of doing it, right, is there's a whole set of DMVs, once again, to be able to query that data for you. And Obviously, I don't have query store enabled, so I won't see anything there. But if I did, you'd see the query plans. In conclusion, execution plans are great because they give us some insight about how SQL Server is returning the data that we requested of it. I hope you enjoyed the first video in this execution plan series, and I hope you'll join me again next week where we'll continue diving deeper into execution plans and how to use them to troubleshoot your queries. And if you're not already a subscriber, please press that subscribe button. That way you'll stay up to date on all these execution plan videos and all the other videos I plan on filming after that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next week.